from great suffering came a solution. Communities. Injected. Serene, beautiful places where disorder became harmony. Do you know how to fly those? Absolutely. Do you get to fly to the edge? Oh, yeah. What's past there? Don't know. We're not allowed to fly past that. Let's go. It's against the rules, Jonas. They're called books. Hello. Uh, my name. I know who you are. Who are you? The giver. When the elders need guidance, I provide wisdom using memories of the past. Our world was different. There was more. More? All right, Jeff. And now, you know, it took a little while to get this movie made. So kind of tell me about that process and why it took so long. 18 years. Yeah, I originally, uh, I originally wanted to direct my father, Lloyd Bridges, uh, in a film, and I wanted it to be a film that my kids could see. So I got myself a catalog of children's books, started to look through it, and I saw this cover of this old grizzled guy. I thought, oh, my dad could play that part, and I saw the Newbery Award stamp on there. I said, oh, this is going to be great. I read it, was knocked out. I thought it worked as a children's book, but also as an adult. I found it so interesting and poetic and started to take it around. And I found out that it was being taught in schools, uh, you know, sold over 12 million copies, 21 countries. I thought, oh, this is going to be a cinch. And I was wrong because, as we mentioned, uh, quite controversial. I found out it was on the banned books list. But that didn't deter me. I thought, oh, this is the kind of movie that I like to see, you know, a movie that's kind of edgy, got some danger to it. But uh, it took me all this time, 18 years, to finally uh, get the thing made. And Harvey Weinstein's uh, company um, and Walden Media finally made that possible. I want to know if you guys were going to have a utopian society, what would be in your own utopian society? What would not be in that society? If you could create your dreamland. Living on the beach <laughs> in a hut. I think that's my dreamland. What would be in Katie Holmes? What would what would you want in there and what would you not want in there? I would not want any suffering or disease or war. Um, I would want a lot of uh, a lot of life, a lot of animals, a lot of trees, a lot of flowers, uh, family, a lot of love, like a billion kids, um, a lot of uh, diversity, and a lot of books, and available travel, and a place where you had to travel, and you had to go uh, learn new stuff. Mm -hmm. So you get all that because I mean that's that's the recipe, right? Now we've, now we've just got to create. I'm it. I'm going to Katie Holmes' Dreamland one stop <laughs> ticket. I don't know. I like Brenton's a hut. She's gonna be stopping at my Dreamland after a while, I think. <laughs> I want to know, you know, you're, you're a mom. So how much do we want to shelter our kids, and how much do we want them to kind of learn things, live life the hard way? Not in terms of like living, but you know, living life lessons. On how much do we want to, you know, shelter them? Um. Well, I think that what this, what this movie and this book uh, clearly does is it, it shows two scenarios. And you're really allowed to see for yourself. And what, what's, what was beautiful to me about this story was Jonas's journey and really experiencing, even though it was ho so hard to experience the pain, the joy was so intense and so great. And I think that, you know, um, our children are very resilient, very capable of actually way more than us. So they're fine. And um, I think what we, our greatest gift is to inspire them and let them know they can do anything. And if you're not afraid for them, they're not going to be afraid. Brent, you'll see them all in time, all colors, all differences. Our people chose to do away with emotions. Those morning injections take them away. And people have the freedom to choose. They choose wrong. Tomorrow morning, skip your injection. I've been doing it for months. What do you feel? He's not usually like this. I'm surprised you're not more worried about him. I would be. Bring up Jonas's activity. He's inquisitive. You should know better than anyone. The way things look and the way things are are very different. 
what? That's my father. There is no way for me to prepare you for the truth. How many years have you been in the business? Well, I guess 64 years if you count uh, what my first performance. I was carried on at six months old. So coming from obviously showbiz family, growing up in the business, is this kind of everything you thought it was going to be? This being... Uh, this life, Hollywood. Oh, this life. Oh, well, life's a surprise, you know, kind of a mystery. You never know exactly what's in store. Um, so I had no idea, and so, you know, my expectations are kind of open-ended. You know, I don't, I don't know really what to expect. I'm surprised all the time. Tell me a little bit about your music. Where, mm. what, what, what can we know about your music right now? Yeah, well, that's kind of a surprise to me, the way that's uh, taken off, and I'm able uh, at this age to uh, realize a, you know, a teenage dream, you know, and, and uh, I'm uh, going on tour with my band, The Abiders, here in a, about a week or two. Uh, we're going to hit uh, New York and go down to Nashville, play at the Grand Ole Opry, the Ryman down there. It's very exciting. We got an album coming out, uh, probably in two or three weeks, uh, a live album with those guys. So that's, uh, you know, that's, you know, very exciting for me. So what, what, what's left on your bucket list? I mean, you've conquered show business. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, well, uh, you certainly get into the music more. Hopefully I'll make a few more good movies. Um, I'm uh, very involved with ending childhood hunger here in America. I'm the national spokesperson for an organization called Share Our Strength, and their No Kid Hungry program. And um, I hope to continue with that. We're Right now, this summer, we're going around meeting with governors and business leaders uh, in different states, letting them know about the, the summer meal programs that are available to um, kids in need. Uh, there's a texting program that we've got uh, that is, is quite uh, uh, exciting. If you dial or if you uh, text food to 877-877, you can find out where these meal programs of this summer are being served in your area and what times they're they're being uh, served. Final question. Mm -hmm. Theme in this film is love. Why does love conquer all? Uh, why does it conquer all? That's a biggie. And I, I, as I you know, mentioned, the mystery, mystery word. I don't know why it does, but it certainly appears to. Uh, in my, that's my experience anyway. So if someone hasn't read the book and they just went, went to see the movie, yeah. how would you describe what type of film this is? I guess it's a multi-genre film. That covers. Um, it's a love story. It's a comedy. It's um, an action. It's um, um, when Harry met. No. It, <laughs> I think when Sari when Sari met Harry. When Sari met, <laughs> met Harry. Met Harry. <laughs> but the family version. The family version. <laughs> um, I would say it's just a it's a it's a story about a guy who finds the truth through a series of um, memories. Basically, the the message is really knowledge is power and. He goes against the grain to discover freedom. Wrapping it up, I got, you know, one of the messages I got was love conquers all, obviously a universal theme. But why do you think, guys think, in our crazy world, why does love ultimately, or hopefully, conquer all? Because it's our survival, I think. Go. Oh, that and water. I wish I had thought of that first. Oh. That and water. Why does love conquer all for you? It's our survival. <laughs> there are things you don't know. You're scaring me. Go back to your family unit. It isn't my family, and neither is yours. Jonas has become dangerous. I know that there's something more. Something that has been stolen. Comfortable? Jonas. There has to be a way to show them. You can stop this. You can change things. Shoot.